going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Farm. My name is Aaron Young. I've got my good friend Gavin with me. Louis behind the helm. You've actually met both of these guys in videos. Louis was with me during Cobia one time, shot like a 55 pound Cobia. And the last time we smashed the Wahoo, Louis was on the boat. Gavin normally bails, so he normally misses the Wahoo, but <laughs> today we are after the last run of Wahoo. We're gonna see if we can, woo, hold on. We're gonna see if we can find a couple before the season kind of finishes out. It tends to peter out March, April, um, but the, the conditions are right. So we're geared up, we got floats and big guns. We're gonna hop in and see if we can locate some of these elusive Wahoos. You there, man? Yeah. Hop in. All right, neutral? Yep. I'll see you on the other side. Welcome back underwater, everybody. As always, I'm gonna talk about some of these dives. I had so much footage on this day, but I'm gonna talk about a few things and some of the stuff, I'll just let it roll, let it be raw. Um, but we had so, so much footage. I really had to try to shorten this episode up to make it watchable. So truth be told, the day before this, uh, a lot of people had actually seen quite a few fish, so we anticipated hopefully seeing a lot of wahoo, but um, it started out kind of slow. We, I think we drifted for about two hours before we actually saw any uh, of the right ones. This was a school, a big school of yellow jacks came in, stayed down deep, out and away. These are delicious, love them. The market will buy them. They just, uh, they wouldn't come in. They stayed down pretty deep. You can see them out there on their way out. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, the, the day before, the Wahoo went off in the afternoon. And typically when they come through in waves, they'll stay around for a couple days. So we were hoping for the best. And uh, you'll see. It ends up being a pretty awesome day. I wish, I wish everyone had the opportunity to see them. I know so many people go out and never even see a fish. I just... Days like this is what makes all of the bad days worth it. About two hours in, finally had a couple fish come in. We uh, kind of started to lose faith a little bit. You typically don't see them that fast, but like I said, the the fact that they saw so many the day before, we had anticipated seeing a lot more, but it just took a while for them to show up. And I had two come in. And they're just barely staying out of range. I really try not to throw Hail Marys if I can help it. Sometimes you get frustrated, but um, these fish are right about where I want. I mean, within a foot or two, I just, I hate starting the day off on a missed shot. And I didn't want to start this day off that way. So I was just trying to be patient using that throw flasher. And you can see they turned around right at it. And by the time I just wasn't ready, it already came up to it and turned and went. And we use those little throw flashers. Just try to get them to come back around. Sometimes it'll make them turn around. Helps you close the gap a little bit. See, this fish came back around to look at it, got close enough and let it rip and put a shot in it. But I actually liked, kind of at a weird angle, it ran up the fillet a little bit, but. Stay in neutral. Two small ones. I got enough of a enough of the shot and I could see it. I was I was pretty thrilled with it. So I was willing to put a little bit more pressure on this fish. So I'm gonna let this run. I uh if you want to skip forward to the landing the fish, feel free. I 
I know a lot of you guys like to see the entire fight, so I actually had to trim it a little. This was a very long clip. It was about seven minutes, but I cut cut quite a bit out, so just let it roll. fish is right here with it. I don't know how far away he is. This is not uncommon. A lot of times if you, they come in in a school or a pair, uh, the other fish will follow the, the fish you've shot up. Just out of curiosity, I guess, trying to see what's going on. When you swam up, he took off. He came right up to this fish. Right below me, Louie. Louie, right below me. So there was, you can't really tell, there was actually a small one that followed this up and then I turned around and there was a big, big one that um, was down deep. Louie couldn't get down in time, but it was it was much bigger, 40, probably 50 pounds. We're on the board. Not a monster, but I will take it. I had a two come in, two smaller ones, got a shot on one and had a big solo come in after and kind of check them out, but just couldn't get couldn't get to them. But like I said, we're on the board. Wahoo in the box. Um, conditions are beautiful, so we're gonna keep drifting. If it ends up going well, don't wanna jinx it. If it ends up going well, we may go commercial or hopefully have enough to sell, but take it as it comes. I'm gonna set up for another drift. No luck since that last school that came through. Um, 10:30. We've been out here since about eight. I think we're gonna try another spot. The weather's starting to lay down. It's actually really nice out, so I'd be surprised if these fish didn't show back up. Got to put the time in. This is the one. So this is the very next drift. I, uh, my gun was unloaded because I had just shot that fish and I threw it in the water because um, I was about to hop in right behind it and I had to adjust my mask so it, it sat there for quite some time and it, it, it sunk down a little bit and of course we hop in, we land on, there's a wall of I think there was like eight or ten of them. Talk about feeling helpless. Gun is 30 feet down and unloaded. But um, I, di I didn't realize that Louie actually was able to get a, a shot off his gun was already loaded, and uh, while I was over here scrambling, he got a shot off and um, spined one, so it didn't do the full run. Stick one? And they hung around for a sec, it just after, you know, after you shoot one, they, they get a little wise and just a lot of cat and mouse this day. You'll see I say it about a hundred times about how weird they're acting. A lot of times I can get them to come in and they were just, they were being very skittish. And obviously once you start shooting at them, that changes things. They're not really having it. Big old hammerhead.
Louie got one? My dog. I hope my camera was on when I was sitting on the I know. I, 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 I was like, oh, no. We were everywhere. So this is the same drift. Um, it was weird. These fish wouldn't come in, but they also wouldn't leave. Uh, Louie was still dealing with his fish and they just kind of circled. They broke up into smaller schools, twos and threes, and they just circled um, for about 15 minutes. And I just, no matter what I did, I couldn't get him to come in close enough to close the gap. Thank you, sir. Oh, perfect. Oh, oh, yeah. Perfect. Oh, no. We're gonna see him, it's about to pop off. Sneaky little. So, Louis shot a fish, so he hopped in and drove. Gavin hopped uh, in the water. You can see this fish come up straight up at the flashers and would just quicker than we could get over to him. And uh, it came in on my side, but Gavin hadn't shot one yet, so I wanted him to shoot a fish. and. He lines up, fish is kind of on its way out, and unfortunately he misses. And I, I would never roast anyone if I wasn't willing to roast myself. I put my misses on here all the time. <laughs> Just sometimes it happens. He went a little low, and you'll see. He was convinced it was too far, but the video evidence doesn't lie. <laughs> I had no idea. I turned around and he was, he was swimming away from us. It happens. It happens. It, it ain't the first one. The good thing is I got it on camera so you can look at it. <laughs> I was right behind you. <laughs> I thought you were going to shoot earlier with that gun. Your, sh your shaft went flying past him. He was within range. That gun shoots far. Huh? No way. I'm, tell I'm telling you right now, the shaft, the wit, the tip of the shaft went like three feet past him. You were, you went underneath him. You, you, yeah, it was low. You can see here, slowed down and zoomed in. You watch the line from the slip tip. It went, eh, yeah, maybe about three feet past it. Sometimes it happens. I've missed plenty. But the camera does not lie.
And this was pretty neat. I saw from this on the surface a ways out this big loggerhead turtle was coming in to check me out. And it was so funny, I promise in my head I was like, man, watch a Wahoo follow this thing up. And sure enough, this thing gets about 15, 20 feet from me and I look behind it and there's a Wahoo. You can see it's shimmering barely under the sun. This turtle just came right in. It was not concerned with me. And I went to drop and he kind of blocked me a little. Not obviously intentionally, but he was kind of in the way of that how I was going. But part of me wasn't concerned about the Wahoo. It was pretty cool to have the turtle come in that close. I just thought it was funny timing to have a Wahoo and a turtle show up. It's pretty neat. A turtle, and I was like, watch. I'm going to see a turtle and a Wahoo's going to swim up. Guess what happened? A Wahoo was following the turtle and just took off. It's weird. A lot of the fish are like actively traveling. A lot of the fish are just like beeline, no stopping. They don't even look at you. So I think it's about, I don't know, one o'clock at this point, and I've cut out a lot of fish coming in. I, I really had to, this episode was like an hour long. I had to trim it down. So many Wahoo coming in and just wouldn't even look at us, either just swimming right by, um, staying out of range. And uh, this is what frustration looks like. After a certain point, you get frustrated and you start throwing Hail Marys. I really try not to, but this was just a little bit out of range for this gun. This fish looks closer, but this is actually like, a 40, 50 pound Wahoo farther than he looks. And I threw a shot and it actually hit it in the tail. It just didn't go all the way through the fish and it tore out. Essentially, I just poked it. It didn't, it didn't really penetrate much at all. Just enough to pull the line for a second. I, I shouldn't have taken the shot, but there, none of them were coming in. Like, I know. I just threw a Hail Mary. It hit him, but it tore out. Alright, here we go. This is the one. Friendly dumb wahoos. So here's another one. We hop in, land right on a fish. They just, yeah, they really started to show up in the afternoon and it was, I'm pretty sure it was every drift for about three or four hours. Uh, we'd see at least one fish. And again, they just weren't having it. Throw flashers, we actually did throw some chum at some point when we were gutting the other wahoo. We'd save the entrails and chunk them up and no matter what we did, we could, could not get them to come in. This one I probably could have thrown a Hail Mary on, but on its way out, again, I hate that shot. Just trying to be patient and not rush it. I really, really don't like injuring fish. It's a small one. He's funky, just not having it. I may have had a shot, but after that last one, I'm just not... I don't want to throw any more Hail Marys. We were just hopping in the boat. Louie dropped. You see one? He just bounced off a giant. It was so far. Oh, bounced day, off a buddy. giant. It's been a day. So we are, we're seeing them. We've got two. Landed right on them. Some friendly ones. Louie got them one. The rest of them are just like, yeah. very sketchy. He came into this, but he just like wouldn't commit. And then I was like, I just sent it, and I just literally just like just tapped them. That's exactly what I did. I, I shouldn't have. I'm curious to see that f that footage back. I shouldn't have even taken the shot, but we've had so many that are just staying way out of range. You just get frustrated, and then you get a little impatient. Um, but we're still seeing them, so maybe we'll do a couple more drifts. I'm not sure. See what the guys are feeling. They are definitely out here. Just a beautiful day, but maybe we'll try a couple more drifts. See if we can get lucky. So very next drift in the water, maybe 10 minutes, these fish come in. Actually pretty mellow. This is normally how Wahoo behave. Giving that broadside, they came in towards the flasher and 
gave me a good shot. I hit it just a smidge low. I was kind of confident, kind of not. I, uh, I knew it was a holding shot. I just didn't know how well I could tell I hit it a little low in the belly. I hit him a little low. My gun's going to be wrapped around the flasher. It should be fine. It might need one. I hit him in the belly, but it's hard to tell. So again, I'm going to let this run raw. If you want to skip forward to the end, feel free. Um, just going to let the clip run. Yeah, stay with me. Stay with me just in case that second one comes up to him. And this fish started pretty mellow. Uh, didn't think it was going to run much. And... Um, it just turned the afterburners on. It was wild. It just out of nowhere took off and not often do I have to get in the boat to chase a fish. I actually had to get Gavin to pick me up. This fish just really turned it on. I don't know. He may be in there good. He just ran pretty hard. I need a ride, Gavin. All right, I'm clear. Ready? I was, I was looking your direction. The, oh, yeah. Is the, is the, the flow line clear, Louis? Yeah, you're good. And I was like, oh. dude, he's oh. moving though, huh? He's good size. Yeah. Look, he's in. I, I didn't want to go down. You played it my direction. But I didn't want to go down to like. I think he looks good, I can't tell. I already pulled up my reels on him. Yeah, you can if you want to. No, I, I can see the slip tip. I can see the slip tip on the other side. He's good. Just the colors of these fish lit up. I mean, there is nothing like it. Just what a beautiful, beautiful fish. That's nice. Grateful for every single one that I've harvested. Yeah, baby. Slippery ones. Finally came in. They came in like straight at us. I was like, I can't hesitate. 
Gotta let it go. Oh! Yeah, baby! We're back on the board again. And then I go to bed. Yeah. I watch a movie and then go to bed. Yeah, I know. That's literally my day. I'm well aware. <laughs> I see how many calls y'all get today. Three, baby! Are you guys ready? Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm in neutral. Don't let me down, Gavin. I'm gonna try, man. Black black cat is what I'm called today. I believe in you. Black cat. Black Grenade. Cat. Let's see it. Black cat in action. Oh, oh. oh Eric, talk to you. So fuck me. You! Oh, toss the guts. Oh yeah. Didn't jump in on any of this time. Shocker. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> so I'm gonna drive a couple shifts. Boys are gonna hop in. We've got three. Because we've got that many, it's more than we need to eat, we're actually gonna sell them. Turn this into a commercial trip and see if we can make a few bucks. But as I said, I mean, we're seeing plenty. They're just, that last set, excuse me, that last set was the friendliest two I've seen all day. That they'll come and check out. It's like when you turn away from them or turn your back on them, they come back and they're in and out, in and out, just odd behavior. Which, there's a lot of boats out here today, uh, a lot of pressure, so. Not uncommon, just a little odd and frustrating at times. But we'll see what happens. They had another nice school come in, but same old story. Just they aren't into they aren't into the, the flashers and the throw flashers. They're just not having it. Um, but like I said, sometimes it's just how it is. Whether it's pressure or the fish are just have somewhere to be, they're migrating. I don't know. Some days it's just like that, but you just got to keep trying and eventually you get some that are a little more willing to come in and play. But we're still seeing fish. Alright, we're going to do one more drift. I promise, one more. Uno mas. Ready to throw your float here? I'll drive. Yeah. Um. Deploy the float. So this is the last drift of the day. We were in the water, not kidding, five, 10 minutes, and what I refer to as the wolf pack shows up. We both drop. You, when a school like this comes in, you wanna try and let them completely surround you so you can get a shot on one. And uh, you can see the camera picks up maybe a third of what was actually there as far as depth. Not exaggerating, there was over a hundred wall, easy. The wolf pack. That was a big school, man. Rip. Gavin was able to get a shot on a fish. You can see the float line going. I turned the camera off for just a split second to make sure it was on and I missed his fish went flying by me. It was super cool, but um, I'm gonna let this roll. It's just so impressive to see a school this size. Reminds you how healthy the population is. I'm in one tiny spot in the ocean and there's, I mean, you can imagine how many other schools of these that you don't see. Um, but I'm just gonna let you swim with these for a few minutes. You can see they were just staying out of range for whatever reason, I could not get them to turn. Normally a school like this, what we call the wolf pack, it's almost guaranteed you get a shot on one but maybe just pressure throughout the past few days on them. Um, you never know, for whatever reason, I couldn't get a shot, but just really, really cool to see. So I'm gonna shut up and let you enjoy the Wahoo.
this clip right here in particular, and I can tell you um, the camera doesn't pick up how deep the school is. You can see the first layer of them. I mean, just this layer, you can see probably 30 or 40, and they just they kept going as far as you could see. Uh, the camera doesn't pick up, like I said, the depth completely, but easily over 100 fish in the school. I may have been able to shoot a small one, but they were just staying away. Did they come right into you? No, I, I, I went down on one and he dipped out and I just sat there and let them all just like come. Yeah. Through. I finally just, I finally just picked one and chased it. Yeah. Your, I, yours, came, yours came flying around in front of me and then all, all, every, every, all mine kind of didn't spook, but they just separated. But yeah, that was wild. Huh? Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. Huh? I didn't even see him come in. I know. I watched him for like five seconds and I was like, Gavin? 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 <laughs> At the same time, I kind of wanted him to completely like come in before I let you know. Because a lot of times that's how you can double. That is a wrap. It's really hard to leave after you see that many wahoo, but we've got enough for the market, so we're gonna head back and get these sold. Mr. Gavin got him a big one. Finally. Better late than never. <laughs> this is the biggest one of the day, yeah? I don't know. I maybe. didn't see it close this week, so I think it was like 35? No, it was over. Probably 40. Oh, it was 40? Wow. Yeah. Good deal. So it's just I didn't shoot. I kinda I, I can't wait to watch the footage back. I was kinda had puppy fever and they were just staying a little out, but it's just so cool to swim around in that. It's just unbelievable. Really remind you how awesome of a fish they are and how healthy the population is. It's a big ocean, they're just hard to find. But um, yeah, we're done. We're gonna head back, get these sold and um, maybe do a profit breakdown or something. We didn't make a million dollars, but we're definitely not in the red now. We'll see you there. Isn't that a beautiful sight? Obviously sold the fish, but it's hard to shoot that many Wahoo and not eat a little bit so i had to pick some up from the market but um oh and how i did this just a little bit of pepper seared it barely and a little bit of ponzu and wasabi hard to beat some of the best fish in the ocean in my opinion but um i'm sitting here editing or starting to edit and i realized i didn't even do a commercial breakdown for the end of the episode so i'm going to need that so for the day we had i think it was it was around 100 pounds of wahoo maybe a little more um, after selling it, taking out expenses, gas and all that jazz, everything involved with running a boat, um, we, the boat, the boat made about 350, 400 ish for the day. So pretty awesome. I, I went out and got to spear some Wahoo with my friends, had a blast, um, got to make an episode and just really enjoyed myself. And now I'm sitting in here about to edit and eating some fresh Wahoo. So, um, yeah, all in all a great day. I don't do these as much, the commercial stuff. Fortunately, I don't rely on it as much for income. I used to rely a little more heavily on uh, making a living, so I had to do a lot more commercial trips. Now I do it if the market needs fish, if the weather's nice and I enjoy it, and I'm just, um, again, lucky um, that I have the, the option to do it whenever I, I please. But uh, that is all I have. Any questions, I will do my very best to get to them. It's obviously getting a little overwhelming. I, I try to keep up with it, but 
it's um it's a tall task uh that is all i have appreciate you tuning in as always and i will see you on the next one later